Welcome back to a new exercise. We continue the study of trains in uniform acceleration. This time, we're going to repeat the exercise about the train chase, but in this case, one train will be moving at a constant speed, whereas the other will start from rest and start speeding up. Once again, we're going to encounter a quadratic equation that we have to solve, so I want to make sure that you see that again. So let's have a look. Two trains leave the station moving in a straight line. One train moves at 60 meters per second, and the other starts from rest with an acceleration of 0.04 meters per second square. Find when and how far from the station the second train will pass the first one. Until now, I have always jumped immediately to solve the exercise. One thing that I have mentioned a few times is that solving physics problems is very similar to learning to drive or to play an instrument. That means you have to do it yourself. You have to practice. It is great that you can see somebody else doing it so you can also get a look of how to get started, but it is very, very important that you try yourself. So one recommendation would be that right now you pause this video and try to at least get it started with the exercise. And then you can just continue and have a look at how I solve the problem. Okay? I'm not going anywhere. How did it go? Step one in my personal recipe is always go through the exercise one more time and have a look at the relevant quantities are given. First of all, we know that the two trains are moving in the same direction. That is very important. We know the speed of the train that moves with constant speed, and we know the acceleration of the second train. We're being asked to find the time and the distance from the station where the speeding train will pass the first one. As usual, we continue with our cartoon. First thing we do is draw the axis. So this is our x-axis. We select our zero coordinate. This is the origin of the coordinate system. And here is where the station is. Station. And the two trains will move in the same direction. The first train is moving with a constant velocity. It's called that V1. The second train starts from rest, but is moving with an acceleration that we can call A2. The two trains move to the right, and at some point that we usually call D, the speeding train will pass the first train. And we need to find the, this point D and the time. We continue writing the equations for the two trains. For train one, we write the position as x10, the initial position, plus velocity times time. And we know that this is very common now. This term is zero because we have chosen our coordinate so that the train starts from this station, which is the coordinate x equals zero. So the train starts from the, from the origin. And this is x1. For the other train, the position is given by a different formula. So it's the initial position plus initial velocity times time plus one half of acceleration times the square of the time. Once again, the second train starts from the exactly the same point. It starts from the station, which is x equals zero. So this term uh, disappears. The second term also goes away because the initial velocity is zero. The exercise says that the train starts from rest. So the expression for the position reduces to simply a times t square with the subscript 2 everywhere. So we know that this denotes the equation for the motion of the second train. We now focus on the passing point. Let's call this the passing point. There. At the passing point, we want to impose to these equations that the two trains are going to be in the same place at the same time. That means we set x1 to be equal to x2, which is a quantity we call d, so this point, the passing point. And since the two trains departed at the same time, we also want t1 to be equal to t2, which we will simply call t to avoid the subscripts everywhere. 
We can do the same with the acceleration. We can simply call A2 equal to A, since it's the only train that is accelerating. So let's write the two equations, but imposing this condition. From the first equation, for the first train, we have x1, which is D now, is V1 times T. And for the second train, we also have D is one half of A times T2 squared, which is just T squared. These are the two equations that make the two trains to be at the same place at the same time. So this basically defines the passing point. And now we need to solve for t. As usual, the left-hand side of the two equations are the same. Therefore, the two right-hand side must be the same. So we write v1t, which is the right-hand side of the first equation, must be equal to the right-hand side of the second equation. And here is our equation for t. It's a quadratic equation, suspected. So I will pass this term to the other side. I get 1 half a t squared minus v1 t. Plug in the values, this becomes 0 0.5, which is the 1 half, times the acceleration, which is 0 0.04 meters per second square, times t square minus v1, 60 meters per second, times t. Expanding this, we get 0.02 t square minus 60 t. As in, in the previous exercise, I have not written the units because all the units here are consistent. The length is in meters and time is in second, same here for the velocity. That consistency will be carried out by the equation. That means that the result that I will get for t, since this is time, will be already in seconds. Let us now solve this equation using the formula for the quadratic equation. There are only two terms in this equation, which means the constant term here is missing, so it's equal to zero, which will simplify things quite a lot. So we can write t, the solution, as one divided by two times a, which is 0 0.02, parenthesis, minus b, which in this case is minus 60, so minus minus 60 is plus 60, this is positive 60, plus minus the square root of b square, so this is minus 60 square is the same as 60 square, minus 4 times a, 0 0.02, times c, the constant factor is 0. And we close the square root and the parenthesis. Now this term here will be zero, so this will simplify quite a lot. Here we get two times 0 0.02 is 0 0.04, parenthesis 60 plus minus. So since this term is zero, this quantity here is zero, the square root of 60 squared is just 60 by definition. And once again, we have two solutions. Notice that if we use the negative solution, that means that we take the minus in this expression, we get zero, 60 minus 60 is zero. So this is not the interesting solution we're looking for. Therefore, we use the plus. 60 plus 60 is 120 divided by 0 0.04. Let's see what we get, 120 divided by 0 0.04 is 3,000. 3,000. This means that the time is 3,000 seconds. There we have it. That is the solution for the time. So 3,000 seconds is the time that it takes for the second for the speeding train to pass the first train. So this is the answer to the first part, the when. We also need to find the how far from the station. So for the distance, as usual, we can take from these two equations that we derived before, we can take either of the two. The first one is simpler. So I will do that here on the side. So let me put a little line here. So I will rewrite the first, equ first equation. D is V1 times T. V1, we know, 
is 60 meters per second and the time we just found is 3000 seconds. We take this product 60 times 3000 is 180,000 meters. 180,000 meters because this is the unit of length we're using here. We can also write this as 180 kilometers. And there we have it. We're going to leave trains here. Starting on the next exercise, we're going to begin the study of objects in free fall. Mm -hmm.